Welcome to Accounting in Focus. In this video we're going to cover straight line depreciation and how to calculate it and what the journal entries would look like. So I guess let's start with the journal entries. Whenever you do a journal entry, it doesn't matter what kind of depreciation you're doing, your entry is always going to be depreciation expense depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. Depreciation expense is an expense account. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. And it's typically linked to a fixed asset account. So either vehicles, buildings, machinery and equipment, furniture and fixtures, some type of asset account. And when you're doing your entries, you're going to debit depreciation expense. So that would be your debit and accumulated depreciation would be your credit. Okay. So like I said, it doesn't matter what method you do, that's what your entry is going to look like. So now let's look at how do you calculate straight line depreciation. Well, straight line depreciation is going to be the same amount every year. That's why we call it straight line. Okay. And so there are a couple key pieces of terminology that you need to know. The first one is cost. Cost is what we pay for the asset. When you're talking about the cost of the asset, it is the cost of purchase and all costs to get ready to use. So the way that I kind of like to think about this is if you're doing, say you have a piece of machinery like this. <clears throat> and you have costs associated to installation, to delivery, to um, if you have to bring in an electrician because you want to put the piece of machinery in a certain location and so you need a plug in the wall, that would be part of the cost of getting it ready to use. So we can't depreciate an asset until it's actually ready to use and we're actually going to start using it. So we can't buy a piece of machinery and let it sit in the corner for six months and then start using it. We couldn't depreciate it for the first six months. So cost is important. The next thing that's important is salvage. You're going to see that term a lot. Salvage is what we think we can sell it for we can sell it for at the end of its life. Okay, so salvage value is, okay, after we're done using it, what do we think we could get for the piece of machinery? The reason that salvage is important is because you cannot depreciate below the salvage value. Okay, so when you're all done depreciating, you should be at the salvage value. And then the last piece of terminology that's important is life. And sometimes you will hear it referred to as useful life. Okay. This is life in accounting is not the same as actual life. Okay. This is the life that we think that we're going to use this piece of machinery to generate income. Used to generate income. Okay, so that's how we think, that's how long we think we're going to have it. Now the reason that this terminology is important is because they go into our formula for calculating depreciation. So our formula for straight line is cost minus salvage divided by life. 
So cost minus salvage divided by life. So if we did that for this fact pattern, we're purchasing a $270,000 piece of machinery on January 1st. So notice we have it the whole year, right? Because this is annual depreciation under straight line. Okay, so this is your depreciation for the whole year. Has an estimated useful life of eight years and an estimated salvage value of 30. So really, if you understand the formula and you understand what all the terms mean, straight line is pretty easy. So we're going to take 270,000 minus 30,000 divided by the life, and our life is eight years. So that would be 240,000. Okay, so this is the maximum amount of depreciation that we could have on the asset. Because if you think about it, I can't go below $30,000 value. So 240 is the maximum amount of depreciation I can have on the asset. And I'm going to divide that evenly over eight years, which means that my annual depreciation is $30,000. Okay, that's it. So the 30000 would be what goes in my journal entry up here. Now let's change the fact pattern a little bit, okay? Because I know sometimes you see partial year depreciation, which means that we don't buy it on January 1st. So let's say instead, let's cross that out, and let's write April 1st. Okay, so once I do that, I now have a partial year. And a lot of students see partial year and they go, oh my god, I don't know what to do, it's partial year, what do we do? Okay, well, it's really not that complicated because essentially what you're going to do is you're going to take your annual depreciation and you're going to multiply it by how many months of the year you actually owned it. Okay, so for a partial year, you're going to take annual times months owned divided by 12. <clears throat> That's it. That's all you have to do. So I'm going to take the 30,000 and so I'm going to have it from April to December. So April to December is nine months over 12 months, okay, which is also the same, which is also the same as 30,000 times three fourths because that's three quarters of the year. So let's see, so 30 times, let's see, 30 divided by 4 is 7,500, and 7,500 times 3 is 22,500. Okay, so that would be for the partial year. So see, partial year is not too bad. You're just going to take the number of months you owned it, divide it by 12, and then multiply it by whatever you got for the annual depreciation. So if you were trying to figure out under this scenario, year one would be 22,500. Years two through eight would equal 30,000. And then in year nine, I know it says it's an eight-year asset, but remember, we only took partial year in year one. So in year nine, I would have to take the rest of the depreciation that I didn't take in year one, which would be 7,500. So that's it. That's all there is to straight-line depreciation and doing a partial year under straight-line depreciation.